this time around, World Elite got a lot of the flavor picks. They got the Rumble. They got the freaking Galio. They played the a Twitch. But uh, this was no Uzi Eye Twitch. This was no Eye Boy Twitch. Mystic is just the man that likes to play Zaya and Kogma. So Samsung Galaxy have found a recipe that works for them. The previous game looked a lot like that game against G2 that it just rolled over, did it quick and elegant. Team World Elite making it harder for themselves by constantly team fighting when they don't need to. They did some good fights, they did some good engages, but a bit of an overextension there and um, a bit of an oversight when it came to how Team World Elite liked to commit to those fights. I am Jacob Jamarkan Mebdi bringing you another review. Game number three. SSG win. Will they win another world championship under the Samsung Galaxy flag? Well, none of these players have won worlds before. That's what I'm trying. That's what I might have said, but I didn't mean that. Will the Samsung Galaxy flag win another World Championship. That is what I wanted to say. Alright, Team World Elite. Sejubani Galioban. Jarvan. High priority. Jarvan has been cursed, given away. First blood, two games in a row. Let's make this into full screen. Full screen, baby. Lulu. With the Janaban, Lulu Bang comes in. Team World Elite. Don't want to first pick. No Lulu. They know that uh, Zara Khan might be in the picture. Now it seems like Javan is the go-to champ to pick. Zaya could be something that is first pick worthy, but Samsung had no interest in picking it earlier. And ooh. Alright, alright. Tistana is also something that works, you know. I think uh, this might be like a like a nut punch from World Elite, you know, right into into ruler. Java's in the picture and um Javan doesn't do that great against uh, Tristana, right? And that's important to highlight. And the ambition just goes straight for the Graguni. Graguni Ice, Samsung. Most likely will play another virus game here into Tristana. Ruler, uh, his champion pool doesn't seem too, uh, too broad. World Elite managed to get the Javan pick as well as the Tristana. Samsung going to play a very similar game, I assume, from the previous game, a very fast-paced one. Maybe they play another Talia with a Varos, and maybe they, they just last pick top and, yeah, with, a, with a champion that is not canon. Could be the case. Because right now there's enough champions that cause problems for World Elite. Nami is an interesting one. We saw it uh, plenty of times with Kogma. Nami is uh, a champion that is going to have a bullseye on her back. Because she's very easy to kill, not that mobile. She's sure she gets mo movement speed with, with her uh, freaking passive where she throws spells. And um, Karma is something that I prefer more. Maybe we'll see a situation like Misfits where they put uh, a melee champion in the bottom, could be very interesting, and then put Karma in the mid lane. Samsung, of course, they round off the composition with a Varus. Let's see now if Team World Elite are going to go for a Talia ban. Last time around, you know, especially with this Cassidy band, they banned Oriana the last time. Oh, look at that bird, though. <sighs> H2O. Holy shit, look, look at the referee, man. The referee looks like the singer of Disturbed. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. Nar is the name of the game, all right? I think they were way too happy, way too happy with uh, the outcome from last time. Uh, Jace is not banned this time around from Samsung, so Rumble is uh, the ban instead, which makes sense, you know, like if, uh, what are the deals with them picking Jace if they don't have Rumble here, so, like with the Java and Jungle on blue side, Jace ban is going to be kind of useless. Malzar is also another band here. I don't think it's necessary. It's 
going to be interesting to see here if Jia Shia is going to go for something standard. Samsung are the ones with Chogat on the menu. I mean Shen on the menu, sorry. Talia is still uh, in the mix. I thought it was more likely that uh, Samsung picked the Choga. So I'm a big fan of uh, Kuvit Chogat. But uh, Shen has been picked multiple times into Chogat, and Shen can outtrade uh, Cho early. And Oriana. Okay. I think Oriana Blind is uh, quite strong. Uh, we'll have to see if Crown picks Talia here. I think Talia could be fantastic. I think uh, I'm not too big a fan of uh, Syndra anymore. I think Syndra just kind of fell off in this tournament, and I think uh, Talia fits more into the narrative that Samsung have built up with their composition. Very early game centric. They're looking for that fast paced game, and uh, Samsung are very comfortable with this Varus. I think uh, if a team uh, is playing Varus, and you know if it's Samsung, then I'm not too unhappy. World Elite. Have a scaling composition once again. You know, their bottom lane matchup isn't that horrible this time around. It's not Varus Janet, it's Varus Tarek. Of course, Samsung will win the all ins at level 6, but early on, World Elite should be able to pounce back. If anything, you know, World Elite should be looking for early swaps if they can manage to get, us, get this push going for bottom and then manage to put themselves in a swap situation. It could be very beneficial for them, especially because they're playing against Talia, they're playing against Shen. If they split the map in half, it can be very, very good. Walk off the stage, brother. Let's see now. Will lead to putting up a greater fight than a lot of people expected. There's this uh, fake Longzu hype that is building up all the time. Oh, Longzu, gonna win worlds. Oh, Longzu. Lost against Samsung. Samsung's gonna win worlds. And of course, you know, by the logic that makes sense. And Samsung played very well against Longzu, but Longzu played very shit too. And uh, Samsung now coming off a victory. Have a very similar composition drafted. I think the, the the win conditions are very similar. But this time around, World Elite don't have like a super strong uh, early game team fight combo. There's no Rumble, there's no Galio. So World Elite have to be playing with a lot more patience than they did last game. And... Um, you know, the lane matchups are also not as bad as last time around. You know, early on, Samsung should be able to uh, win everywhere except bottom early. And um, after that, you know, Choga scales well into the lane. Oriana scales well into the lane. Jarvan also as a jungler could potentially create something uh, with, uh, with all of his laners early. But uh, I don't think there will be any invading uh, happening because you know, at the end of the day, Samsung... <clears throat> Samsung are the one with Talia, is what I was trying to say. Okay, I'm talking about the lack of invasions, and then it's coming up straight up. Crown spots the ward, and Crown could go for this, but uh, I think uh, Oriana could push this in time. Whoa, 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 a lot of damage, and I think uh, this is not too bad for Conti, this is a big trade-off, and Crown is taking a lot of damage, and Crown, ooh, that's a very important flash, very well-timed flash, and, you know, Crown lost a freaking wave of mid lane creeps, one wave, and he only got XP from one, Crown also lost a lot of HP, so I think this is a this is a good trade. As long as Kondi doesn't get first blooded here, I think he should be very happy. And, uh, you know, sure, Crown stopped the blue buff, but uh, at a very pricey cost. You know, Talia is going to uh, swoosh by uh, during the phase where she is quite weak. Like, no, like in the phase that she's strong, she's going to swoop by with uh, no potions, and Oriana's going to be able to pressure this for the remainder of the game. You know, that's how massive these implications uh, that's how massive uh, implications this has 
to the game. You know, if uh, Talia is looking for base now though, and uh, she managed to get it, she was slow pushing the wave in. Uh, the cannon wave was uh, closer to her tower than it was to Oriana's tower after World Elite, uh, like Shia, he just pushed it in. Dark Zealand Crown, I guess the state he's in is not too terrible. Like if Oriana gets to push this in, and you know, I think that there's a chance that Oriana might stay as well, but it looks like she's just gonna base. Too low mana, too low mana to stay. Very important base cancel. This is <laughs> it's very annoying stuff, and Oriana's gonna lose a couple more CS because of that. So at least bot lane definitely should have pressure early. At level 6 it should be a lot harder for them. Especially when Shen is 6 and Talia is 6. I have a feeling that Karma is going to be dying a lot this game. I was talking about Nami having a target on the back. Like Karma is also running around with a target on the back. <clears throat> like would lead if they could line themselves up for a base right here it could be really good they have enough money for beer sword down bottom mystic got the stun off javan is in position i don't know if diving could be happening right now it uh, feels a bit too soon the would lead don't have the best champions for it i think that was a good time to base if anything and uh, they could have lined themselves up for a beer sword base it could have been good they're maintaining the push though, and uh, I think BS Sword means a great deal here though. Ruler can't buy it, and he's running Warlord's Bloodlust. I really don't like Warlord's Bloodlust on, on Varus. This is a tough lane for him early on though, but seems like the Warlord's Bloodlust is not making any difference. Shia is now coming in. Shen Ultimate lands, and crazy, the World Elite are the ones forcing the play like this. Shen gets cancelled up top by Cho'Gath, and uh, they're just sieging the turret. Talia is in position, but Talia is only level five. Can't ult in here if uh, that was, if that was the plan for Samsung. Shen does use ult though, and that's uh, that's also cool. Poor elite, I would say. Seems now like um, Samsung are managing to turn bot lane on his head, and uh, I don't know, I can't help but feel that World Elite should have based there, but they did force Cordy J Flash, and they did force Shen's ultimate, so you could argue that it's worth it in the end, but I don't know. You know, the main difference here is like I'm complaining about BF Sword base is that, you know, uh, Varus is not going for some BF sword base, like he's fine with uh, whatever items he would get thrown at. So, it's not as valuable to base at 42 when the enemy has 30. If the enemy doesn't want to buy BF anyway, like he would just go for recurve bow and uh, be happy with it. Pushing AD carry. 49% forward this series. Wow. That is a great ruler. Does this count the time you walk from base? Because that would be sad. I think 50% uh, is like 
the, the second game he was 100% of the time on the enemy side and uh, in the first game he wasn't. Boy, let's take a look now. Not, that, not, not a lot happened during this time where Shen didn't have ult. Kondi catches Ambition, and Ambition is once again in a position in mid where, uh, you know, Talia is in base right now. Talia is in base, and that's a problem. Good taunt from Kuve. Kondi is very low, does have flash. But that's another Shen ultimate that Ambition is just forcing out of his team. And Kondi being low doesn't matter that much. Like, you can just recall, like, she comes out of that with uh, full health and only losing heal. I think uh, World Leads are very happy with that. On top of that, Shen is losing a lot of CS top and Kuve is now behind in experience. Not CS wise for some reason, but XP wise for sure. I wonder what the plan is for World Leads bot lane uh, with uh, uh, staying bot for so long. Like uh, They are maintaining the push and maybe with item Samsung can actually kill someone in an all in. Right now, in an all they don't have a lot of damage, and you can actually get away with a barrier and, and a heal. And uh, maybe this is the thought process. Like, where the leads want to maintain and keep the enemy bot lane in base for as long as possible. But I don't know. Uh, like, both sports have managed, managed to get some bases off. And I want to understand the, the reasoning, the full extent of this reasoning. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking world elite are thinking that if Samsung get items, then all of a sudden they can one-shot like a Karma and a Varus ultimate. Okay. That's the flash. Two flashes now. Or that was the W from Mystic, not the flash. Orion's gonna push out mid lane now. Javan is in position for bottom to make a defensive play. Grax no flash. Walk it into mid lane. It's important that uh, would lead to play through mid lane and contest around mid lane to deny all of this vision that Samsung keep placing here. Which is um, what is giving Samsung space here to play into bottom side. Let's just go back and take a look at what Ambition actually does. So Talia goes into mid, Java is in base. They just maintain these pings for a very long time. And the lack of pings for for elite is quite disturbing. Ping was get cleared by Italia constantly, which should also be a problem. From now and onwards, I just want Kondi to play together with uh, Oriana and just um, maintain the pink wards around mid lane to make sure that uh, Crown doesn't have the safest path ever to to go through. Kuve is about to get his ult back up, walking back up top lane, rushing, Titanic. Ginsu's finished. Arden Sensu finished on Karma. That was a way better base for, for Ruler than it was for Mystic. I think that's an issue. Like such a late base is, is for sure better for Ruler. And uh, I'm not too big of a fan of this. Good JJ. Doesn't have Arden Sensu, but it's going to come up soon. But. Uh, now it's a mystic uh, delaying his base for so long and playing against finished Ginsu, I think uh, it's not that great. Tarek now with the Arden Sensor. They got that going for themselves, at least they have Arden Sensor advantage. And of course, they also have a gold advantage, right? So it is it is working out for them. Javan gets spotted by lane wards, tribush wards, and a lot of wards in general that Samsung have managed to place. And once again, lack of pink wards here in the mid lane for world elite is, is a big issue because I think Talia is getting a lot more space than she should. 
and uh, I think uh, the first big play that will happen will be uh, from Samsung because of this. I think 2v2 in mid lane where the league can do fantastic things. But there's, also, there's of course an issue as well with Oriana not having flash. Ambition has flash and they could just combo Oriana and one shot her. Could definitely happen. with the wall down bottom first tower falls mm -hmm. She has flashed up again. Connie has been very inactive as of recently. Tristana's gonna spike a bit later than Twitch, and uh, she needs some solo experience and some some items here to be very effective. Rapid fire cannons usually around the point where Tristana starts to show up big time, but uh, as it stands right now, Ruler is super strong, and uh, the commitment that uh, what Lita going for is not the greatest one here. They go one for one eventually and it might not be that bad. I just want to see the moment where, you know, Varus and Tarek, they are swapping into bottom because they're behind on tempo. If they walk top, then, you know, World Lead would already be hitting the bottom tower and that would be like horrible in terms of trading sure they would be in position for rift out but pushing the next wave in bottom allows them to rotate into mid and then into top and then just do it in a better position where they actually have tempo advantage but uh noticing that uh world elite are very split up they go for bottom tower and it's uh, working but then oriana's in position the rotation into mid should be very clean and crisp and clear cut now for samsung because nobody is in mid lane and oriana has to take Quite a long path. They get priority and just roam at the top. One for one in the end. In terms of towers, boom. Alright, so Varus and Tarek back at it again, pushing up top. With the priority, they rotate into mid lane. Karma Tristana show up top, meaning Samsung outnumber heavily in mid lane. They have the Shen ultimate. 957 has TP2 respond, and Oriana gets smacked in the face. That is the late ass freaking first blood. Didn't even think about that. And uh, the game, not a lot of things have happened besides Varus getting bottom tower, Varus continuing to push bottom, swapping into top, using priority to rotate into mid lane, Oriana overextends and dies to Gragas. Very good angle found by Ambition. And uh, Samsung are in the same position as before. They have a winning bot lane. And when World Elite don't win bot lane, the games look very different. You know, I think uh, the main issue for me is, you know, it's not necessarily that Mystic and Karma, like, they are weaker in both, is the fact that they based at Ginsu's Rage Blade, and then when Ginsu's appeared, uh, it was such a big problem. And then on top of that, like, Condi didn't really do anything to impact mid lane and uh, make sure that Crown 
didn't have such an easy time to roam in the bottom side because there was pink wards in the river at all times and uh, there was vision there at all times for Samsung, so they were taking no risks by, while doing this. Whoa, that's a good Oriana ultimate, and that's a feast onto Tarek. Maybe the most anticlimactic character to do that to. Samsung do have a good team to do Nashor with the Leandri Stormant and the Q damage of Shen and the Varos. It goes very, very fast. Let's go back and look at the team fight. Shen is close by. Condi gets chunked out very fast and without anything happening here, Condi just gets one shotted. And that's a big deal. He gets completely clamped, clapped by ambition. Like he just procs his Colossus on him and ease him and cancels his EQ at the same time. And hmm. Is it just a bad engage or? I can't help but feel that it is. The EQ's in, Gragas cancels him, and gets one shotted. Getting in against Samsung is pretty hard. Mm -hmm. It's just such a weak target to EQ, right? It's fucking, it's freaking Gragas. Like you're EQing Gragas. Not even like he cancelled you, and it just seems really suboptimal. Choga really couldn't really follow up either. Like Choga is right there now, and I don't know where his Q went. He doesn't have Q ready or something. I don't know why he's not queuing. There we go. That's the Q on to call JJ. Right. Samsung, very similar to the previous game, you know, World Elite, take a fight and Jarvan seems to be the kryptonite of both of these teams. Jarvan uh, tried to get in there and, uh, and Gragas is a freaking menace. Gragas was really beefy, didn't take a lot of damage from Conti and... Uh, Would lead, need a lot more items before they actually can DPS people down like the Gragas. Because right now the the cheaper items and the cheaper itemizations are much stronger. Much stronger with the Ginsu's finished and Leandri's. I think uh, Samsung are very well equipped to shut down one target very fast. Mm -hmm. I think I need to take a nap before I continue uh, on to the next game after this one. I'm feeling like... Pff. Feeling done. But it just seems like such a textbook Samsung game, you know? Like, nothing happens for 20 minutes. Like, they get some turrets. The main question here is, World Elite... Should they start banning Varus? Should they start removing Varus from the table? It's very hard to find room in the current pick and ban phase. Very, very hard to find room. And uh, with that in mind, like Samsung have found the recipe for success. This was what they showed against um, They showed against, um, I'm sorry, I thought someone knocked on the door. 
<clears throat> this is what they showed against G2, right? And they stormed them really fast. And I think this is how they look the best when they have the Varos and the Talia and a bunch of early game components that uh, make them strong there. And then they just put themselves in a situation where they get a better fight and then they are very well equipped to do Nash early and uh, there you go. Samsung recipe to success. Cannibal feel that World Elite could have done a lot more in the early game to contest that. They could have actually played around mid lane. You know, the 2v2 in mid should be in their favor with Orianna's ultimate. And uh, it just didn't happen. Like, Orianna's flash was forced by Samsung. And, um, you know, a lot of respect was given to Shen. But there was a lot of periods in time where Shen didn't have ultimate. And uh, it just seems to me like World Elite, you know, they it looked like they, like, carefully executed the situation where they dealt with the Shen very well by forcing his ultimates and backing off. But during the time where he didn't have ultimate, it just didn't matter. Like, it didn't matter at all. It didn't impact mid lane at all. And uh, there was no pink wards placed by World Elite, and they just didn't uh, take charge of it. Talia could just walk down bottom unpunished all the time. And I think that was the biggest issue for World Elite. Eventually, Samsung got the first bot tower. They got the bot tower, uh, second bot tower as well, while World Elite went top. Samsung went on to swap into top, rotate into mid lane, get the first blood on Orianna, get the kill, get the mid tower, go top, take top tower, and then eventually play around Nasher. Where World Elite and Condi uh, go for an engage on the Gragas. That just didn't work out. Not at all. World Elite engages much worse than in the previous game that's important to note here like uh, Galid, like Javan can get one-shotted there's a voice staff ready on Crown as well so the MR is not that relevant anymore of course it's relevant but uh, this uh, Tali does a lot of damage to Javans too I'm just going to slow down the pace of the game a little bit here. Going a bit too fast, and I think a lot will come down to this. You know, World Elite still have this death ball, and maybe the sick Oriana ultimate can put them back into the game. Uh, Javan ultimate with the Oriana ultimate. It is on cooldown now, though, and Samsung have a lot of summoners. They have a lot of MR too. Tristana does have a lot of items too. The tanks are getting hit and they're taking some damage, but the front line of uh, of Cho'Gath, you know, is just melting way too fast against uh, the Fed, Varos and Talia. Leandris Torment and the Blade of King, they are dying very, very fast. And uh, the front line comparison right now in terms of about how much money they have and etc. It's just too much in favor for Samsung. Take a look at the fight again though. So no Javan ultimate. Like Javan used ultimate right here. He went for it and uh, it didn't pan out. All came back and Condi also lost half of his HP during that situation. So that's also like already a big deal. And then Samsung woke in here. Great engage from Ambition. Like good EQ into a lot of important targets. Two flashes are burnt, two heals are burnt from Oriana and um, Karma instantly. Java being chunked out already, like the fight starts pretty bad for Samsung already. And uh, Talia with the rocks is just zoning. Hmm. Could World Elite do anything better? Doesn't feel like it, you know. I just there's just too big of a level advantage now, and I think the problem was that Condi just engaged and used all of his spells there, and uh, after that, like when Choga is so deep and he TP so deep, like right here we needed an EQ and a Javan ultimate, and then maybe 
just maybe where the lead would have had a bigger chance. But after Javin uses his EQ and his ult for different reasons, I don't know, man. It's not that great. Karma down, powering up, powering dead. Looks like a Samsung victory to me. You know, the way you break this is like last time, last time what Lee lost was because they had like weaker lane matchups everywhere, right? They had weaker lane matchups and they had uh, champions that scaled into the lane a lot better. What Lee had more of a team fight composition and they had that going for themselves and not necessarily that would lead had a bad draft this time around they do have stronger lanes and they need they need to just use it more they did use it to force channel twice but other than that nothing really happened i think uh, would lead should have been able to play around mid lane during those times where shen didn't have ult and then just uh, put down the pinks and maintain the vision to make sure that oriana can play her game but oriana was completely blind the entire game and that's a big issue very big issue, and Talia was allowed to roam bottom as much as she wanted without getting punished. And um, you also have to put into question this base that Mystic did at 150 CS. You know, he based at 150 CS, and that was a bit too late. I think if he based earlier on BF Sword, it would have been better. And um, Ginsu's Rage Blade was fully bought in one go, and I think that's a big problem. If you are the one pressuring bottom that you allow your enemy to get such a good base. I don't think it was necessary at all. And right now, you know, massive gold lead in the hands of Samsung. They are freaking rich right now. You know, they got they got bank. That's a that's a 14k gold lead right there. Three inhibitors is down. No chance, no chance. Will the lead need to see the lesson here? They need to see the lesson. They need to see the lesson. Uh, Samsung were way better at playing around mid lane. Ambition played the vision game very, very well. And Condi got outmaneuvered. Condi was forced to do a defensive play all the time. And Condi wasn't allowed to play his game, even though he had a bot lane that was pushing. Uh, the bot lane didn't uh, buy items. I think they should have based on BF and that point in time where I mentioned that maybe the game would have looked different and then they forced the Shen ultimate multiple times and World Elite was starting to look good but uh, the issue came in when you know Ginsu's Rage Bay came in and uh, Crown was just having priority in mid lane the entire time I think if you pick Oriana into Talia then you should have like an expectation that you're looking for that 2v2 in mid lane what does this tongue stick out bro you're looking for uh, that um, 2v2 in mid lane but it just, just never happened. And Samsung playing the same game over and over, very clean, very crisp, very fast paced. When we reached the 20 minute mark, uh, Samsung are very good at finishing the game, very good at playing around Nasher, and World Elite are taking fights they shouldn't be taking. Uh, they need to play around mid lane more heavily. And Samsung, you know, with this inactivity in early game, you know, they're just playing to maintain a status quo, they're maintaining like the lane phases and giving each other space to roam into one area to focus on that objective that is a turret. Uh, with that being said, let's head into the next one. Let's see what, what happens next. I think uh, Samsung have a very good number here. You know, they have a very good uh, sense of uh, what they play when all these initial bands and when all the OPs are out, what they uh, put their focus on and it's working. The Varos with the Talia and the Shen, I like it a lot, and uh, I expect Shen to be higher priority because Shen has been a very prominent pick in this tournament, and uh, Talia for Crown maybe it should be banned when Cassidy is out. And uh, I like the fact that Samsung adapted and picked Shen for themselves. The best thing World Elite had to offer into it was, in fact, the Cho'Gat when Rumble was banned. And, uh, you know, with that being said, that is a completely fine matchup for Shen to blind pick into. A, a, a lot of teams pick Shen into Cho'Gat, and uh, that makes it uh, so much more interesting here that Samsung figured this out, figured this flaw out in World Elite's draft, and we might see some Shen pickups earlier in the game now. Uh, we'll see now. Uh, it's, 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 for some strange reason, Red Side seems more powerful here than it did uh, yesterday because of the early peak on Red and... Uh, the fact that you are able to pick two champs in the first initial rotation. And I think that should be the case when a lot of bands are coming out. Uh, 
you know, and when there's a lot of bans not happening, then it should be fine either way. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.